Welcome. Uh, we're going to jump right into our live today. Today we are talking about Pinterest marketing tactics and how you can leverage your business or your marketing agency or your interior design business for Pinterest and how you can leverage that content that you're already producing. Maybe you have a content strategy already and you could use it on Pinterest to see extraordinary results. Um, full disclosure, I've been in communication with Pinterest Canada and with Pinterest US uh, talking to some of the partnership people that are there that were explaining some things to me and explaining how Pinterest works and how we can leverage it and how, you know, customers and clients and no matter where you are, they wanted to talk to me about what Pinterest can do. And I was very impressed. Um, to say the least, I didn't necessarily fully understand the business marketing aspect of Pinterest, um, but it was very informational. And I want to share some of the knowledge because, you know, I'm not a gatekeeper here. I'm here to help you guys. So we're going to jump right in. Um, the big biggest thing that I want to make sure that people understand uh, is the difference between like a social media platform and a search platform when we're talking about Pinterest. Um, you know, what is Pinterest? When people use it, you start thinking of like moms, people that are redoing their homes and stuff like that. But Pinterest is growing at an extraordinary rate. Um, and they showed us some of the stats that were there. And it's a powerful marketing tool that, you know, it helps you utilize your content in an evergreen way. And instead of you just using something once on social media where it peaks within 24 hours, now you can start to leverage Pinterest in a way that's going to help uh, help you rank for certain words and keywords and topics and trends and seasonal things that happen all at the same time where it's, you know, renewable. It's not based on that 24-hour al algorithmic cycle. So first things first, you know, Pinterest and, you know, search versus social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, number one, if you're talking about social media, the content is built for engagement. You want people to do something. <clears throat> and the, the it functions or it works off of trends and hashtags. Um People that go on social media are usually looking to pass time, to be entertained. Um, they also post pictures because uh, they want, you know, to post stuff about themselves or make video content that's funny. It's more about consumption. And then when you're talking about Pinterest, you need to think of it as like the visual version of Google search. Um, so imagine search, but visual that's Pinterest. People are post or pinning or saving ideas that that are relatable to what they're actually looking for. And the great analogy that uh, somebody showed with me that I was on a call with from Pinterest Canada was social media. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Social media is about what happened, and Pinterest and search is about what's going to happen. So social media is where you post what you ate for lunch, past tense, what you're doing now, present tense. Uh, Pinterest and search is about what you're going to do, where you're going to go, what you're planning. Let's say you're having a dinner party. You want to make sure that you have maybe the, a nice trendy decor or theme for your party or you're going on a vacation. You want to pin some ideas on where to go or some of the activities you should do when you're in this specific city or country. You're planning so that's really great for marketers. In terms of marketers, marketers now, you're talking about people's intentions. You're talking about people who are planning to do something. And that's very powerful for us because now we can intersect, you know, inject our content, our initiatives, um, our marketing initiatives into that conversation. Oh, oh, you're planning to redo your home? Well, have you considered X, Y, and Z? And have you thought about these type of trends? And have you thought about using a professional? And now you can start to see if you are a home goods person, a decorator, or interior designer, if you sell something. Pinterest is now allowing you to create a holistic platform here that is a little bit more evergreen, not even a little bit more. It's more evergreen than social media. Social media is kind of like using uh, paper plates. When you're done, the intended use that you throw it out, right? Once you post something, it's about supposed to be there for like 24, 48 hours. And then people are kind of looking for new content the next time they load up these, this app. So 
the platform is it going to keep serving your old content to new people? Relevancy um, is a very big factor in Pinterest. Uh, on social media, whereas in Pinterest, it's more about your keywords and those search terms and making sure people have the greatest idea that they want to save. So that's social media. Um, it's about engagement. It's about right now. It's about hashtags. It's about trends. It's about following friends and family. It's about posting pictures. Um, Pinterest is going to be more for generating traffic, um, you know, people that are looking for trends, people that are looking for trends, not just viewing trends. Um, they, you don't necessarily follow uh, your friends and family members on Pinterest. Uh, you're not posting pictures of yourself. Most of the content there is evergreen. Lots of it has call to actions to uh, uh, URLs or um, purchasing, which is something that uh, a lot of people are doing more and more nowadays. The stat that I saw is that eight purchasers, whether online, social media, or search or whatever, Pinterest users uh, spend 80% more than social media users. So if you have a shop on Instagram where you're selling your handmade soaps or uh, home decor items or whatever it might be, whatever you're selling, people are more likely to spend on Pinterest 80% more than they would here. I'm talking about total basket value here. So Pinterest allows you to create these boards where you can now post pins onto. I know if you're new to Pinterest, it sounds like a whole other planet of language, you know, in, in, in how we communicate. But these boards, think of it like a mood board. Think of it like a cork board in your house. You're pinning things, ideas, pins to this that are all around the same type of category. When you post these type of things onto those type of categories, um, now people can start to understand what you're offering and what you're serving. So it could be vacation, it could be winter fashion, it could be home decor, interior design, it could be any of these things. And you start posting relevant content into those buckets and now it's searchable based on the title, okay? So that's one of the biggest things that you need to think about when you're thinking about Pinterest and you're considering it for how am I going to leverage this inside of my content marketing strategy is, okay, this is different than just a social media platform. This is gonna be some where people search. So the biggest thing you need to understand is your, we, we talk about this all the time, is your customer journey, uh, um, customer buyer journey, and where is your customer and how are you interacting with them? So where are you going to position the content that you have now and the content that you're posting online? How are you positioning it and which one's going to be for Pinterest and which one's going to be for your social platform? Because there's so many things to post on. And Sometimes they can become very overwhelming. Whether you're writing blog posts, maybe you're supposed to be on Pinterest, maybe you want to be on Instagram. If you're in designer, you want to be on House, you're on LinkedIn, and you're like, how am I supposed to keep track? And the best way is to figure out, okay, where is this customer at in their buying journey? Are they in the awareness phase, the consideration phase, the decision-making phase? And where am I going to put Pinterest in this? Is this just for brand awareness? Is this for brand trust? Is this for increased conversions? That's where you have to make a little bit more of a conscious plan for your marketing, and that's gonna help you. But we're gonna talk as if you were trying to convert people for more sale. The goal is more sales. So we're gonna talk about the last two parts of a sales funnel, a basic sales funnel. We're gonna talk about consideration and decision making. So when you're dealing with creating or repurposing. A lot of people use this for repurposing content. When you're dealing with repurposing your content, um, it's going to be very instrumental that you, you understand that this is visual first and people want this to be a visual landing place for them. So when they're searching for something, the first thing you need to understand is that if my creative, if my artwork, if my you know pin uh, is not good, <laughs> that it's not going to be able to translate. You need to have something that is going to stop people from their scroll and make them pay attention to what you're doing. Like I said, 85%, um, this is a different stat, 85% of pinners search for and prefer visual content. So these are people who are already visually inclined and they are 
uh, not going to Google just to find text or blogs about something they're searching, let's say a dinner party that they're about to host, they're going to go on Pinterest and type in dinner party, and they're going to start to see, oh, here are some ways that I can style my dining room table. Here are some things that I can do in terms of serving drinks and cocktails. They're going to go here because now the pictures are going to entice them. So on Pinterest, you share content on Pinterest boards and all these boards start to collect. And now your, you know, potential, you know, viewers, followers, people that could be your customers, they start collecting pins that you've pinned onto boards that are their own. Maybe they're doing this, you know, quarterly dinner party and it's called Dinner Party 2022. And they're going to now pin all these different ideas from different uh, uh, creators on here who are going to be able to organize and put a theme together and put a plan together and be inspired by different things. So unlike Instagram's uh, uh, users can click through and see these links live. So they're going to be able to be like, oh, this is a great recipe. And when they click it, it goes directly to your website. So already you can see some of the benefits if you're a business owner, if you're some type of marketer, or if you're, you know, somebody in this world, you can be like, oh, I can generate this uh, uh, more traffic for my site by posting these items on Pinterest. The beauty of it is uh, this is not tied to a specific individual event. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit more. So like I said, Keep in mind, people are looking to have inspiration, to build a theme, to build an idea together, and you're helping them with the visual attributes of the things that look good and sound good to them, and you'll get rewarded for that and later. So the biggest thing people want to understand if you're, let's say, an interior designer, if you're a business owner, if you're a marketer, is how do I build a following on Pinterest? Now, you could search and add, you know, friends and stuff like that, Facebook accounts and and all those different things, you can you can connect them so that you can find immediately people that you want to maybe have inside your network. But that's not a, a great way to sustain uh, natural organic growth. Instead, you, you need to consider uh, different ways to grow your fan base and your followership on Pinterest because it can lead to so many great things like conversions, like traffic. So the number one thing I would say is promote your Pinterest account on other social media accounts. So if you're on Twitter and you have a new post, instead of just linking directly to something, try linking it to a pin or having the pin embedded inside your Twitter post or your Facebook post. So people are seeing that and saving it. So now you're getting people who understand what you're serving and it's like this matches what I'm looking for and they're saving it. It's a better way to save instead of having a, a tab that opens up um, and they read a blog and then that tab is gone forever. Um, a Pinterest allows them to save it so they can go back. It's like a, a beautiful bookmarking platform as well, right? So people can use it to bookmark, oh, I need to read this cocktail recipe for my dinner party. So I'm going to save it on my Pinterest because it's part of the whole theme that I'm building here. The other thing you can do is follow accounts that you think um, would want to follow you back. So if they're in the, your niche, your target market, then you want to make sure that you're you're in that space and you're following the people that are doing great things. And uh, as well as that, the third thing is watch what they're doing. What are they posting um, to, to increase their base? And you can learn from their techniques. You don't need to copy them word for word. You need to be you, but you need to do need to understand, oh, they're seeing success through this method. And then you'll be able to do the same thing and say, I'm going to also uh, provide the unique approach like this and I can start to test it and see if this works. And you take stock and you see, okay, through the insights, through the analytics, I can tell that this is working or it's not working. Um, the, one of the biggest things is number four here is using keywords in your post. Okay. So Pinterest does not operate on hashtags. Um, the same way that Instagram or um, Twitter does. Uh, it's more, again, like search where it's reading the title of your pin, the title of the post that you are pinning. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit more. Um, the other thing that you want to do as well, number five, is ask uh, influencers or people that you know in your industry should share a pin. Or if you're doing maybe a blog for a blog, I don't know the way you're doing your marketing strategy, you can include some pins inside of your post and they can include pins in your post. And then that way, uh, 
it actually helps get people um, interested in, in finding you on that platform. And just side note, if you own a blog or a website, get the pin, uh, the Pinterest widget. It just get, lets people know that you're a part of that community. And it also lets people know that, oh, I want to save this pin immediately from this website. And it allows them to do that at the same time. The last thing that you can do if you're trying to grow your Pinterest uh, followership is start to pay for ads, especially if you're a business. That's kind of how this whole thing works, um, is that people uh, uh, pay to play. And if you're interested in having a ad account, you can start to do specific um ad campaigns and we have a whole YouTube video that's about to come out next week talking about you know the different types of Pinterest ads whether it's a conversion ad whether it's a consideration ad um, and that's how you can run on the platform and it will just basically boost your presence and try to find viewers for your ad so if you have a promotion let's say you're uh, selling home goods um, you're going to be able to have this promotion go out and get people's attention and find people that were in your demographic and hopefully a they pin um, your pin and second of all secondly uh, you know they go to your website they purchase and lastly you hope that they follow your account and now you have a direct connection to them whenever you're posting things so in terms of a website and again I'm going fast because there's so much information that I want to be able to get through in terms of driving traffic to your website and to boost online sales Pinterest, unlike Instagram, allows you to link your visual content to a direct page. So your website is going to be the, the best place, in, at least in my mind, um, for you to link the visual content. So a company like ours, we run a marketing agency called Creative Partner Studios. Um, a lot of the posts that we make are visually very appealing. They have great photography, great uh, typography, and the layout is very clean. Thank you, Isabel, our designer, for that. Um, and we are going to start leveraging that on Pinterest because it looks so great. It stops people from scrolling. It gets people's attention. And instead of posting just a link and an image on Facebook, which could get someone's attention, um, now we're giving people the option to click the link, go to the website, but also to save the pin there as well. So this allows you to, uh, to share both the written and the visual content to the direct people who like it, whichever way that they like to view that type of of content and like I said before Pinterest is like a visual search platform so you are dealing with people who are visually more inclined to be uh, uh, spend more time looking at things and being impressed by things and and that's the better way to communicate to them everyone has a, a different way that they like to search um, if I'm looking for a how-to I used to look on Google and now I look on 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 TikTok or on YouTube because that Quick information um, just helps me understand what the decision I'm trying to make. And it's the same thing with Pinterest. If I'm looking for something that is aesthetic, like, you know, new men's winter boots, then I'm going to go on Pinterest. I'm not going to go on Google. I'm not going to go on YouTube and because Pinterest will have more of the items that I want to see how is this going to interact and work uh, for this type of, of uh, uh, purchase decision that I'm trying to make. Now, by integrating Pinterest on your website, you'll be easy. You'll be able to easily drive traffic from one web page directly to your Pinterest profile, so your leads and customers can begin viewing your content in seconds, and hopefully, they're going to follow you as well. You want people to start to get familiarized with the content and the rhythm that you're posting pinned so they can see, oh, if I appreciate this person's interior design taste and style, I want to keep up on maybe whenever they post something about a new project or maybe they post something about a new uh, method or treatment that they're applying to one of their um, plat uh, uh, projects that they're doing. And that could maybe help me in my decision into A, hiring this person as like an interior designer or B, sourcing products similar to what these products are like and all of that works in your favor because now you become a source of inspiration and you become an expert to this person and that ultimately does lead to sales and if you have other parts of a marketing strategy you can you can learn about how to convert people who live in that consideration phase or that inspiration phase and convert them into into people who are clients who are purchasers who are decision makers 
So we have about five to eight minutes left here and have been going really, really fast. Um, I do want to take a moment and talk about marketing strategies that hold value um, on Pinterest for any size. doesn't matter if you're SEA, SME or if you're in, in enterprise. These things are going to be really important if you're new to the Pinterest platform. The number one thing you need to do is sign up for a business account. I made the mistake. I made the mistake of uh, trying to make this in, with my personal account and not in, even understanding, firstly, how Pinterest could be used in my company. And I was just trying to figure some stuff out. And I did. I realized, oh, I need to make a separate account um, to be testing and trying these things out. So I ended up having to call Pinterest uh, and be like, hey, how do I merge these two separate things that I've created here? Because now it's getting a little bit... Uh, embarrassing and, and and crazy uh, in terms of me trying to understand uh, what what and what and how I should be using these platforms. And again, when you're new on a platform that you you don't really spend time on, um, you know, I only knew Pinterest on how to pin things when I needed something. I was not spending time there regularly. So all that to say. Set up a business account. You're going to get way better features on a business account than you would on a personal account. You know, analytics, performance details, you're going to get insights, um, ads. All those things are going to be a part of the business plan as well as the widgets, Pinterest tags. Um, so you can convert your current account into a business one. You can merge it. You can have it combined. That's what you want. To, you just want to have a professional account so you get the professional tools that will help you reach the audience that you're trying to do. Because that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to market ourselves so that we find the right people to be talking to. The second thing you want to be doing is choose the right category for your content. When you first sign up and you start making boards on Pinterest, you have to kind of identify where this is going to go. Is this uh, uh, education purposes only? Is this for inspiration? Is this health and beauty? Is this, uh, you know, cosmetics? Is this going to be for whatever? You, you pick whatever category you want to do and make sure that that is true to the content that you're um, posting it. Remember, there's no hashtags. So your your best bet is going to be letting the algorithm choose which people should be seeing your pin based on the categories and based on the keywords um, that are inside here. And I'll, I'll share that with you in, in just a second. Number three, use unique images and, and videos. Like I said, your creative is what's going to stop people and get their attention. Um, if you're in a position where you're posting something that is lackluster uh, and you've done everything else and you're not seeing performance the, the way that you want to see performance, I would say take a look at your creative, take a look at your ad, take a look at your pins that you're posting and maybe ask a friend to help because uh, that might be able to give you some insight as to why people are not um, clicking or stopping or paying attention to your pins because on Pinterest, it's really easy to get attention and to get traffic. If you have something that really does look the part. Um, I also want to make mention number four here, which is super important. I know I've touched on it just a few times beforehand is leveraging keywords. Okay. So keywords are super important because, again, that's the primary way people are going to find your content because that's how the algorithm is prioritizing your content. So your bio and your profile, those are things where you need to make be conscious of your keyword, your pin description, the title and the description. There's a title section and the description section. Those, again, that's where you're going to be paying attention to leveraging those keywords. The board titles, when you make a board on Pinterest, name it something that makes sense, that people would search for that they would be surprised and delighted when they find out that you have a collection of these things that is not just a one-off. Again, the description for that board, that if we have, let's say, a description for, for my company, we would make a description for all of our blog posts about interior designers. Um, like It would be maybe called tips and tricks for t interior designers and or marketing tips for interior designers. It might be even more specific. That's where you would then want to dive in deeper into the description of the board and explain the context of it and all of our pins that are in that are about our blog posts for interior designers would live there and people could have a catalog of similar content that they know is going to help them because it's all a part of marketing tips for interior designers as well as because it's such a visual based platform you're going to want to have um, image based text um, 
uh, sorry, image alt text. <laughs> I don't know why I just said image based text. Image alt text. And these alt texts are going to be able to help people again see the description as to what's happening inside the photo and let the algorithm know what is happening in the photo. So number six, that was number number four, number five rather, is share your content on other social media platforms. That's a given. Cross pollination through different people. That's how people will find your platform on Pinterest and be understand what you're doing there. Um, number six is follow, engage, and interact with other accounts. We already spoke about that as well. And then analyze your results. So the metrics are very important um, and, and to kind of find out what's working and what's not working. Insights about the number of people who are saving your pins. Platform metrics, there's lots of great keyword search tools built into Pinterest and data about your most popular pins. Um, these are all things that are super important. Um, it's one thing to post things regularly on Pinterest. It is a completely other thing to consider how it's performing and to make uh, um, decision uh, uh, decisions based off of the data. Um, and that's what's going to help you become successful on any platform, doesn't matter what social media platform that you're on. Okay, that was like a fire hydrant of information. So I want you guys to take away from this that Pinterest is such a powerful marketing tool with great abilities of organically increasing your brand awareness, your conversions, your you know your sales, and can also help create long-lasting relationships with your target audience and buyer personas. So you can achieve all of these things for your business by following the Pinterest marketing strategies that I've listed here, at least slowly start to integrate. And like I mentioned, we are going to be talking about in an upcoming um, YouTube video that we're creating right now about the different ad strategies that you can use within Pinterest. Um, I was given a uh, great uh, referral and resources in terms of how to leverage Pinterest right now because it's such a growing platform that can help people uh, leverage ads and get tons of traffic to your ad, to your store, to your shop, to whatever that you're doing. So the best thing to do right after this video is to go create a business account with Pinterest and start to identify how you're going to leverage uh, the Pinterest platform in your content marketing strategy holistically. Okay, if you got any questions, drop them in the comment. Sorry I was talking fast. Sorry I was about two minutes late for the live, but I'm super stoked about this and I can't wait to dive into the comments to see how people are using Pinterest today. All right, y'all. Peace out. Have a good one.